Hi friends, hope you are doing great. In today's tutorial, I'm going to repurpose Paper Discovery's clock die to create a card that looks like Cinderella's carriage. This project was actually inspired by another crafter who has used the same die set. I'm talking about Sam from Mixed Up Crafts. Sam created some amazing party invitations. I will put a link down below in the description. Do check out her tutorials. Now to the tutorial. This is the die set that I mentioned. It's called Time on your hands. And I'm going to use the largest die from the set. It's uh, about 10 inches tall to create the shape of the card. I'm going to die cut two shapes out of white cardstock. I'm using A4 size cardstock and a large die cutting machine since the die is so large. If you don't have a wide die cutting plate, it's not a problem because this die will fit onto the regular 6 inch wide cutting plates. You will just have to send it twice through the die cutting machine. The decoration at the bottom of the clock does have a cut line, but it still remains attached to the main image. So it's up to you if you want to keep it or you want to trim it completely off and use it separately. There is also a rectangle shape that is going to be the hinge. I will show you later how you can use it. You can see that there is an embossed pattern at the top of the clock and that um, decoration at the bottom is also embossed. And for this project I do trim, uh, I do trim it off. I've die cut two clock shapes, but I'm only going to color the front one. I'm using uh, tumbled glass distress ink and applying it with uh, the sponge applicator. I really do prefer to use the scrap piece of paper instead of the craft mat here because it absorbs the ink and it allows me to keep the back um, really clean. And uh, I also noticed that I get smoother blend in this way. So I have applied the lighter shape all around the outline and now I'm switching to the darker shade, which is faded jeans. I have placed uh, the die cut back into the die and I'm applying that ink through the die using it as a stencil. This way I can really make the pattern stand out. And then I'm going to repeat this process with the, the decoration at the bottom of the clock. As always, the tools and supplies are listed down below in the description box as well as on my blog. Now I'm putting the two die cuts together and I'm trimming off the top part. Then I'm placing uh, the card front into the scoring board and I'm using the ruler to make sure I have put it straight and you see that the top is touching the zero mark. And then I'm scoring uh, the shape at five and a half inch mark, then at six inches and then uh, at six and a quarter. I'm going to score the other die cut the same way, so I'm pl placing them together and I'm transferring all the scored lines onto the next die cut and this way they are absolutely identical. Then I'm going to trim off the bottom uh, of uh, the clock along the last scored line. To create the carriage door, I'm going to use the fireplace die, which is from the same timeless collection by Paper Discovery. I will be using the thin gold elements as decorations. And for the door shape, I'm going to use white die cut. I'm trimming off that fire screen part, as well as those uh, smaller elements that uh, I'm going to turn to decorations as well. I'm placing the door back into the die just like I did uh, with the card front and uh, then I'm applying the same two shades of blue ink. I'm also going to add the stamped window image to the carriage door. 
I'm uh, sticking it down onto my uh, stamping tool and then I'm going to use the window die from Timeless Room stamp set also from the same latest paper discovery release. I'm stamping this image with the Versamark ink and then I'm going to apply some gold embossing powder. This window turned out to be the perfect size for the door. After I have heat set the powder, I'm going to use the water-based markers to color this window. Again, I'm using a few shades of blue. I'm using darker color for glass areas and then I'm using um, tumbled glass to color the outlines. When I'm done with the coloring, I'm applying some double-sided tape at the wrong side of this die cut and I'm sticking it down onto the card front at about a quarter of an inch from the scored line. And then I'm going to add the golden outlines around that uh, little door. So I'm using the Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue in a needle applicator bottle. I'm applying a really small amount of adhesive onto the die cut and sticking it down, just placing it next to, to the door. I'm adding uh, one more die cut at the bottom of the door and then I'm going to add some uh, smaller elements that I've die cut earlier. So I'm applying uh, the glue again onto the white elements and I'm sticking it down uh, next to the door. I'm just making sure they are symmetrical and uh, then I'm uh, again adding uh, the golden uh, outlines around those elements as well. To make this carriage door look even more like a door, I'm going to add uh, some hardware. So I'm using this uh, handle image. This is actually from other die set by Paper Discovery that is called Elegant Door. I'm also going to use that uh, small embossed uh, circular decoration piece and I'm uh, placing it at the top of the card just like that. I will also be adding some liquid pearls as decoration. The color I'm using is copper. I'm squeezing out some dots of this medium onto the embossed pattern at the top of my carriage and then I'm going to set it aside while I'm working on the rest of the card. I will also be adding one small half pearl onto that golden circle at the top. To create the carriage wheels, I'll be using uh, the dies to create that uh, circle frame with a trellis pattern and I will also need a golden rosette. These dies are from two different sets, but both are by Paper Discovery. Now I have applied some glue only around the outline of the rosette and I'm sticking it down onto the lacy circle. I have made all four wheels exactly the same way. Now I'm going to stick down the two wheels onto the base that is going to be that embossed shape. I did uh, tape it down onto the grid mat just to make sure I'm sticking down the wheels straight. So you see I'm using that line over there because if one wheel uh, is uh, even slightly above the other, the carriage is going to be lopsided. I'm going to need one more shape just like this one and uh, the second one is easier because I'm using the first one as a guide so I have aligned the wheels and then I'm applying some adhesive onto the base and I'm sticking it down on top of the wheels and this way both shapes are the same. To connect the front and the back of the card, I'm going to use that hinge that I've die cut at the very beginning. I'm folding it in half, the score line is created by the die, then I'm applying some glue and I'm placing it just like that at the very top of the card and pressing it down un until the glue sticks. 
Then I have folded the squared lines zigzag wise just like that and it's exactly how Pam did that on her tutorial. And then I'm going to attach the wheels to the carriage. I'm applying some uh, liquid glue only to that uh, short one quarter of an inch tab and I'm going to stick uh, this uh, shape with the wheels exactly in the center so that it should uh, cover the tab completely. Then I'm going to flip the card over and attach uh, the second pair of wheels. So again I have applied some liquid glue onto the tab only and I'm uh, sticking down the wheels, aligning them uh, with the ones that are already on the carriage. I'm also going to add this sentiment onto this card. So I have uh, this stamp set by Paper Discovery and uh, some of the sentiments from the set are curved and I'm going to use the happy birthday one and I'm stamping it onto a piece of vellum. Then I'm going to gold emboss it. This stamp set works great with the paper discovery windows, doors, as well as the clocks. There is a matching die included in the set and I'm going to place it over the sentiment, tape it down and send it through the die cutting machine. This die also creates some score lines, so I'm going to use them and I'm folding down this banner and this way I'm going to add some dimension to it. I'm also using uh, the bone folder to burnish the folds. Then I'm going to apply a little bit of hot glue only behind those uh, scored areas and this way it's not going to be visible. And I'm placing the banner just above the window like this. I have also added some liquid pearls as well as the half pearl to the bottom of the carriage. That finishes my project for today. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I have inspired you to try and use your dice in many different ways. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again really soon.